Hi, and welcome to the third episode of our series on live streaming. In the first episode, we covered simple one-camera streaming, and the second episode covered multi-source streaming and switchers. In this episode, we'll look at a real-world example and show you some behind the scenes of how we produced a stream. A few weeks back, we broadcasted a demo of our Sprout Video Platform's new live streaming features. We knew it would be a lot more engaging if more than one of us could be in the broadcast, but because we're still working from home, we had to figure out a way to get that done remotely that didn't feel like a standard conference call. We also wanted to give it some pizzazz, so we added graphics, videos, and other elements to help it look professional. Let's go over the ingredients of our live stream and why we think each is important, and then we'll take a look at how we made each happen. We opened with an intro video that started with a please stand by message for 10 minutes, followed by a five minute countdown, a title card, a 30 second promo video, this is a great element to add to a live stream because it lets your audience trickle in and take their seats, so to speak. And it keeps the beginning from being awkward, just out of nowhere, hi. It's functional, but it also elevates your production value and adds some anticipation. At that point, I kicked off the live stream with an introduction. From there on in, the stream was a mix of two of us on screen together, slides, and a screencast of our platform. This was the real meat of the broadcast, the informational part, and we wanted to keep it engaging. The slides gave us structure and gave our audience a roadmap of where we were in the broadcast, and the screencast allowed us to demo the Sprout Video platform in real time. Then, once we signed off, we cut to an end card and some slick music to play us out. This acts as a call to action, but also keeps the stream from stopping too abruptly. Always try to end on a positive note, and the music helped us keep the energy up straight through the sign off. Okay, now that we've covered those ingredients, let's get into how we pulled it all off. We ran the stream from an iMac and OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. Here's a snap of my setup. My FS7 and a boom mic are sent to OBS via a video capture device. And my iPad was set up with OBS Remote, a browser-based app controlling OBS from my tablet. This way, I could keep my iPad front and center and switch our sources quickly without having to hunt around for them in the middle of the broadcast. Also, a finger tap is much quieter than a mouse click, which would have been audible. In OBS, here are my scenes. I had intro, camera, convo, desktop, slides, and outro. The intro film was all one video file, and in OBS you can choose a media file as your source. When you cut to this source, OBS will automatically play that file from the beginning. Same thing with our outro, just a media file queued up in OBS. Then the camera scene is very simple, just my audio and my video sources. The slides were a series of JPEGs I opened in preview, and for this scene I just chose an application as my source. When you do this, OBS will only broadcast whatever is in the app, but note, when you resize the app, it also resizes itself in OBS. For my desktop screencast, I chose to only screencast part of my screen, and I resized my browser window to fit perfectly into that portion. Now you can see my slides are in the top right, and my desktop screencast is set here to the left. Each are aligned for broadcast, and I still have OBS in view so I can control everything without my audience seeing how the sausage is made. You can split your screen up like this because a display like my iMac has 5K resolution, but you're probably only screencasting 720 or 1080. That gives you a lot of resolution to work with. And for the slides, regardless of what size they are on my screen, OBS is importing the full resolution of the JPEGs straight from the app. Okay, now let's tackle the scene that includes the two of us. This one's a little tricky. There are a lot of ways to do this, but we chose one that's a little bit of a hack. You know what? I'll need some help for this. Ike, are you there? Hey, Nick. Everyone, this is Ike Ajavan, our marketing content strategist. Ike, can you show us what this whole thing looked like on your end? I'd be happy to. First, let me show you my setup. I have a mirrorless camera and a shotgun mic boomed above my head. The mic is going into the camera and both are going into the video capture device that I chose as my Skype webcam. How'd you walk us through the platform while I was screencasting it? Well, if you remember, you shared your screen with me through Skype. So why don't we do that again? Uh, sharing now. Great. Here's a view of my desktop. I have the outline of our show, and here I have Nick's screen so I can see the screencast she's showing the audience. We need to do it this way because the latency of a live stream is about 12 seconds. I couldn't just monitor the broadcast to keep up with the action. I had to monitor behind the scenes in the Skype screen share. I think it worked really well. Yeah, totally great. Thanks, Ike. We'll see ya. This is a lot, I know. Here's a breakdown of what we just described. Ike's camera and audio are going to Skype, and his Skype feed is going to me. My Skype feed and desktop are going back to Ike, and I'm live streaming a mix of all of it. 
Hey, I have one quick note. A popular way of live streaming screencast is to hook up a separate laptop via HDMI and choose it as a source in OBS. That way you never have to screencast the same screen you're using to view OBS and control your broadcast. But in this case, if I had Ike on Skype on my iMac and my screencast on a MacBook, he would not have been able to see the action of our screencast in real time. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, now I'll walk you through how we built our chat scene. First, I downloaded a third-party app for OBS that adds network device interface sources, also called NDIs. So this scene is made up of Ike's NDI from Skype, Ike's audio, my camera and my audio, and a graphic overlay. This is just a branded PNG that sits over our video sources. It makes everything look a bit more professional. And it also covers the Skype watermark. See, Skype's NDI doesn't allow you to turn that off, so you'll have to cover it up. That's it, we just made our own chat interface by piecing together different elements. I guess the last thing to cover is audio. You might've noticed the video and audio sources are separate in OBS, which is great because it allows you to add your mic's audio to whatever scenes need it, and more importantly, to keep it out of scenes that don't. Ike and I added our audio to the desktop scene and the slides scene, so I could cut to them without interrupting our conversation. But I left the audio out of the intro and outro videos. That way, while our audience was watching the countdown, Ike and I were talking on Skype, getting ready for the show. That's it, that's how we did all of it. A lot of research went into this, but we're still pretty new at live streaming and we're sorting it out as we go. Let us know if you have any questions and feel free to tell us what you think of our technique. Thanks for watching.